morning, everyone. Welcome to Camp Sir Us, as we like to say, Crew Belmore Open House, virtual open house. My name is Heather Comparetto. I'm the director of Crew Belmore. Um, on the call with me today is Tracy Stein. She's the regional director. Um, so let's welcome her as well. Um, I have been the director at Crew Belmore for three years. Um, I have to say, um, I enjoy being able to work at the camp. The camp has grown so much um, with the COVID pandemic. We've definitely um, had a great summer last year. Um, the kids had a great time. I also have a program director. His name is Jonathan. Unfortunately, he couldn't be on the call today, um, but he will be at the camp. Um, and the overview of how we are work together is kind of we work as a tag team. Um, I work kind of directly with the parents and Jonathan is kind of in charge of like the programming and then we like they said work together to get everything done. Tracy, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Tracy. I um, ran East Rockaway for the past three summers and will now be the regional director over um, for the West campuses, which includes Belmore, Baldwin, East Rockaway, and Valley Stream. So I'm looking forward to the new position this summer. Congratulations. So are we. So what will be going over in the, this virtual open house? Um, we're going to talk about first arrival and dismissal. Um, it's kind of, we've made it kind of like a valet service, um, if you can say that. We're gonna then talk about the camp day. We're gonna talk about health and wellness. And then we're gonna talk about registration information. Um, questions, again, like I said, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in um, the Q&A and we will be more than happy to answer any questions that come up. Down here. This is just an overview of the Belmore campus. So Heather can point out what areas of the campus that we use the most so you can kind of get an idea where arrival happens, where dismissal happens, et cetera. So Heather, Perfect. if you Thank want to talk about that. Yep. So this way, you know, this is coming along the back entrance here um, to the Camp Service Belmore. It's St. Elizabeth Ann Seton School is actually the name of the school that, that um, if you wanted to look up, that's actually the school that we use. So this is coming south off of Sunrise Highway, and this is coming um, north off of Merrick Road. And then what, how it works in the morning is you'll pull in here. And we kind of set up cones, and you come up this way, and we have um, tented tables set up. Um, staff will come to your car, so no one has to get out of the car. Um, we'll temp you know, the campers right there at the car. The temperatures will be recorded. Um, and then you'll get out of the car if their temperatures are good. Uh, a staff member will provide hand sanitizer right there so they can put on their sanitizer. They get out with their masks on and the crew all wear masks as well. Um, and then we kind of take them and another counselor is waiting to bring them inside to the building. And then you can just kind of go around in like a big U and you go right out. The same thing happens at dismissal. You'll pull right in here. Um, and as the weeks go on, uh, it's the same staff who does um, arrival and dismissal and they actually will start to learn um, your cars, who people are. So they usually will be calling uh, for your child um, as you're pulling in the parking lot. Um, so they're very attentive uh, that way. Um, so again, we're kind of reducing that getting in and getting out of the car. For the first few weeks, we do ask that um, whoever is picking up your child has identification on them. We do this for safety reasons. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we are making we're identifying who is picking up your child. Also, in your um, Camp and Touch account, you can go and upload for us information of who you would like to put on the list of eligible people to kind of pick up your your child. We also use this field over here across the street. We do walk um, in tandem two by two when we do cross. Um, we do use this field over here. Sometimes we like to play kickball. They like to play softball. Um, also, you know, when it's nice outside, we have this nice area for sh uh, soccer shots that they go over and they can play over here. 
Um, on this blacktop, once we close the entrances, this is a blacktop where we play basketball, they ride cars, they do hula hoops, they do sidewalk chalk, um, just every and anything that they can do. This little um, grassy area right here, we usually set up a couple of tables. So there's shaded area if kids want to take a break, maybe make some bracelets, do some uh, coloring. And then we do use this little piece of grass right here for all of our water activities. So this is what I just actually went over. I kind of could have moved it over there. So you'll see um, here for arrival, you, like they're coming in, they've gotten temped, now they're getting their sanitizer. And then the same thing over here at dismissal, um, one of the group counselors, or I actually like the group leaders to walk them out. So at the end of the day, the group leader can give you an update and then you start also learning and get a feeling for you know who is your child's uh, group leader and you can form a nice relationship. Again, photo identification, and they always um, use sanitizer and or are escorted to the car um, until the child is in and the doors are closed. Sorry. So looking back to 2020, like I said, you know, we really had to reimagine what uh, camp was going to look like. Um, you know, it was the first time um, in months that, you know, people were able to come out, children were able to come out and have um, somewhat of a normal summer. Um, I have to say at Crew Belmore, I have an amazing staff, Jonathan and I, um, a lot of them are teachers. So they, you know, love being around kids. They're, they're here to have uh, fun. We brought in um, inflatables for inside. You can see in the background, it has a rock wall. You go up and then go down a slide. Um, a lot of water activities. Um, we had a uh, successful um, summer. We had eight week, uh, our eight week program ran um, and there were zero tr transmissions of COVID throughout all 10 campuses, um, which is a great job by the whole team at Crew Belmore and the organization. And just to add to that for um, as far as activities, we couldn't go off campus last year, but as far as activities that came onto campus, they had a magician come on. Um, they had a little petting zoo for the younger kids. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought a lot onto campus to compensate the lack of trips and off-campus activities that we couldn't provide for them. Yes, that's a great point, Tracy. And I have to say a lot of the campers um, enjoyed that because they were able to just move from activity to activity and there was no um, having to shuffle off campus and then come back. <clears throat> Looking forward to 2021, um, you know, we look forward to it. Um, we, we start our planning basically right after, you know, we end one season, we're already starting to move into another one. Um, and, you know, with COVID, um, you know, we're going to build off of the experience from last year. Um, I know this year we are, you know, going to try and get some off-campus trips going. The calendar should be out. Um, soon, but actually this picture, if you see, um, this is actually a all-female dance performing group from Brooklyn that actually came to the campus. Uh, they performed for us. It was amazing. And you could see, you know, the children in the background, the staff members, you know, they came down and kind of taught them the dance and then everybody did the dance together. So we are definitely ready for another, you know, healthy summer, fun summer. Um, and we're really looking forward to it. So every day at camp, so kind of like a day, uh, a day in the life of your camper, um, there's actually a structured schedule. There's a schedule for uh, what we like to call nice weather and rainy weather. Um, and it's almost like a school schedule. Um, so it's, you know, each period is lasts from like 45 to 60 minutes. Um, there's activities like gym where they get to go play, you know, the poison ball, um, you know, the younger kids like to play duck, duck, goose, you know, they get to do a lot of fun things inside the actual gym. They also do arts and crafts, which um, our art teacher is amazing. Uh, Julia, she really comes up with some creative stuff that kind of follows the camp ca uh, calendar that we have and the events going on. So there's always arts and craft. 
We have a gaming room um, that has Kindles with all you know appropriate apps downloaded that they can use. There are some video games. Um, then we go downstairs uh, where we have a big room where we have like a Gaga pit set, set up. We have ping pong, we have pool, we have all different board games for them to do. And then when we go back outside, you know, we have uh, go-karts. Like I said, there's plastic houses for your tiny tots and your, your, little, your little guys. Um, we do a lot of water activities. They like to have fun. I think last year we went through like a thousand water balloons, but you know what? It, it was easy, fun, and everybody, even the staff members get involved. So it's really, really nice um, to have that interaction. Um, and then we also have um, electives that uh, the campers can choose from, like fitness, Educamp is a, a really nice program. We have soccer shots, we have a dance person. Um, so they're all club activities. Um, that they can pick and choose uh, throughout the summer. And along with electives, just to add a point to um, some of the electives, we add in maybe cooking, nature, science. Um, those are things, depending on what our staff members, um, you know, hobbies are and what their, what their talents are, we add those programs in as well. So they will have choices from those two throughout the summer. Great point. They definitely are kept busy throughout the day. Um, you know, we like to, you know, we say a good day at camp is when they get picked up and they're uh, ready to like eat dinner and go to bed. Um, so we definitely keep them um, interaction. Um, and like I said, this, this staff really likes to um, get involved and be a part of the day. Um, so the off uh, campus experience is a big part of camp. Um, so how it used to go is uh, they would travel twice a week for swimming and bowling. Um, and I think this year, Tracy? They're going, this year, each um, grade will be going, except the tiny tots, will be going um, swimming and bowling five times throughout the summer. And each group is going to get two trips. Um, and then the seventh and eighth graders will have two additional bonus trips as well. And then the third through eighth graders will have a bonus trip to the Mets game. Perfect. Thank you. So a lot of, you know, opportunity to get involved and pick and choose what activities off campus um, that your campers would like to get involved with. So again, trying to bring back the whole uh, on and off campus experience. So health and wellness, I will say uh, health and wellness is very, very big throughout all of the campuses at uh, Camps or Us. Um, I personally, you know, oversee everything from, you know, the allergy lists um, that are run. I run every week and make sure that every group leader is aware of the allergies and um, things that we have to watch out for within their groups. Um, again, like I said, I take it personally. Um, I know since I do have a lot of teachers on staff, including myself, we are fully vaccinated. Um, so that is a good thing. They know um, also on the campus, I would say 99% of my, my crew, as I like to call them, they are returning staff members. Some of them, this is their second year. Some of them, this is their third year. So they are aware um, of the COVID precautions that we take and how to, um, when they're supposed to do them and the protocols to follow. Again, we do do training um, on the COVID updates. We are um, informed out at the campuses of any changes. Um, they're also, you know, the senior staff um, that we have are trained in uh, American Red Cross CPR and first aid, as well as anaphylaxis response and food allergy awareness, um, which actually we have a program that comes in um, by Safe Kids and they actually um, talk to uh, the staff members and the campus. Um, I like to uh, make sure that communication is huge. It's very important to me. Um, and I will tell you the group leaders um, on staff are definitely, um, will communicate with parents. They do like, I, like I said, I like to have them bring out the camper so they can explain how the child's day was. Um, I, every week um, will set send out um, at the end of the day on Friday, I will send out an overview of what our week looked like 
uh, what was happening. I also then on that email send out as a reminder what's coming up for the for the week, uh, the following week. So when you if you when you join, um, I like to tell parents please put an email that you're going to check regularly because I do like to communicate. Um, send reminders of like special events that we have so parents can be prepared because um, I know sometimes things get crazy. So communication is definitely very important. I do check my email. Um, so I do try to stay on top so that there is an open line of communication. I understand just like school, we, you know, we have your child for the majority of the day. So it's very important to communicate back and forth. So registration information. Um, so as far as the sessions, um, you can choose up, up to eight weeks between two to five days per week. Um, and you can even mix and match your days each week. So that's a great feature, um, especially if you're gonna try to plan to go somewhere um, over the summer or you know if something comes up. Um, the camp fees that are, are there are selected based on the weeks and the days. The more campers attend, the less you pay for a week and day. We do have a great discount program. Um, we offer employee discounts, sibling discounts, rebates, um, the Long Island Loyalty, Loyalty Club um, has a ton of um, discounts that you can go into and you can use more than one discount um, at a time. So uh, I would recommend a friend, you know, siblings, the Long Island Loyalty, definitely check out the discount section um, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, we do have payment plans available. You can pay in full. Um, save up, defer your full payment, or use, you know, monthly installment payments. So again, um, we try to offer as many um, plans as possible to make it easy on the parents um, in that portion. And that's um, really the the nuts and bolts of the of the thing. I don't know if anybody has any questions. The Q and A is open. If anybody wants to um, ask any questions, you can just pop it into the Q and A. I'm also going to make it where you guys can verbally talk also as well. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. All you have to do is just unmute yourself. I have a question. Sure. Hi. Wait, how do I, un how do I get you rid of the picture of you? I want them to see me. I like to be personal. So while my husband's trying to figure out how to get my picture up, not that it matters, but um, we're all about safety. So mm -hmm. my question is, once the children are um, at the school, are the doors locked? And what are your safety precautions for people walking in? That's a great question. So um, the main entrance to the school, which is actually on Washington Avenue, that door stays locked at all times. Um, it's never unlocked. Um, the only way to get into drop off or pick up your child is either at the times allotted um, where the back gate will be open. That means there's no campers outside. Um, everybody's coming in that way. At a certain time, we do um, stop, um, especially arrival, because then we close the gate and that gate is locked. Um, and the key, um, I have the key to it. So I make sure it never gets open. We do have a side parking lot. Um, and it has like a gate and there's like a little walkway. So what we do there is I have a picnic table pushed up against there. I am now gonna have two wooden stop signs that say stop and have the phone number to call um, because I do carry um, a walkie talkie as well as a phone or two phones on me at the same time. Um, that in case anybody is trying to get on, um, you know, they can call me and I can answer any questions. Also, when the children are outside, all of the group leaders, group counselors, they're all engaged. They know that they are to keep 
watch on that area. So they usually um, will rotate it and one will stand back against the stairs. That's the back entrance that goes up this, you know, they walk in and out that way. And then they can also monitor like that area where it is. Okay, thank you, Heather. You're very welcome. We also had a question of, are all staff members required to be vaccinated or wear masks? So as of right now, we, we wear masks at all times. Um, we wear them both inside and outside. So staff members, uh, uh, as of this moment, um, we have, I guess, I think from the same as last year, right, Tracy, CDC guidelines is we still are required to yes. wear them, um, whether we're vaccinated or not. I do let my staff members know that they, you know, are now considered part of um, the population that can get vaccinated because they are uh, work at a camp. So I, I do let them know that it is available to them, um, but I can't really, you know, make it. I will tell you that a lot of them are because they are teachers um, and they are vaccinated. Um, but we do stay um, also when we, we walk in the halls, there's certain patterns. They know that they can't, you know, if one group is coming through, then the other group um, stays where they are until that whole grade. So how we break it up is they're in cohorts. Um, we haven't got the numbers yet, I believe, of the guidelines, but each, like, let's say uh, one, two, the first and second graders. So every day they have like the same, what we call hub, that's where they go. That's where they stay until we go into breakout. Um, their stuff stays there. So it's all in one area. Um, and then they stay within their group. They don't intermingle within the cohorts. And again, masks are worn at all times. We have plenty of masks. We also have a cleaning schedule. Okay, we also have a question, you know, what are the mask protocols? Distancing, for example, pool time, lunch time, et cetera. So lunchtime, the staff members wear their masks. The children do sit. We there are, you know, spaced out, um, and the the crew members are, you know, they make sure that they stay that way. Um, and like I said, you know, earlier we've we had zero cases across, you know, ten campuses last year. Um, so they do keep them on. You know, they know both the staff and the campers know that this is a requirement. Okay, we have a question again. Do the children need to bring their own food? Um, Good question. So yeah, so um, a couple of changes of, you know, that we made last year based on the COVID um, guidelines by the CDC. Um, so now lunches are, are brought in. You, ha you have to bring your lunch. Um, they have to be in brown bags and everything has to be able to be thrown out. Um, once lunch is over. In the past, there are refrigerators and there are microwaves. So we do keep the, um, the cold lunches in the refrigerator. They again are separated by cohort. So again, no intermingling. And there is a, a separate side for any allergy um, um, kids that have allergies. We have a separate area for that. So then, you know, they have to bring their lunch. Again, it could be cold. It's something that has to be warmed up. That's fine. But again, everything has to be able to, um, nothing can be left in the refrigerator after lunch. Okay, and the next question is, if our children are scheduled to come to camp on that day that there's a date trip planned and they don't want them to go, will there be people to stay back and entertain our kids? Absolutely. I always stay on campus. Um, you know, so I'm always there. And depending on how many of the campers um, opt out for a trip, it, it depends, you know, I know the ratios that staff members will stay back as well. And it'll be a regular day on campus. So if it's, you know, sunshining outside, we follow the, the nice weather schedule and, you know, it goes off without a hitch. That's all the questions in the Q&A right now. Does anybody else have any questions? I know there was a question before, but I answered that, um, you know, I typed in the answer, what time camp starts and what time camp ends. Okay. We do start at 840 as the early, you know, the, as a regular drop off and it ends at 510. However, we do have um, extended hours for those that need. Our extended hours start at 730 in the morning and they end at six o'clock for a minimal charge. And that all gets charged to your Camp and Touch account, and you don't need to make a reservation for that. 
Um, we're always on campus. So it's like a, a service that's always there for you. Yes, and we do have a, um, a lot of campers that are there early and we do have um, usually a nice size group that's there until six. Okay, we have another question. Is there medical staff? And as Heather's sneezing, I will answer that question. Um, we do have our, not a nurse on, we do have nurses that um, are monitoring campuses, um, which will rotate, but they're not there all day. Um, we do have our senior staff all certified in first aid, CPR, anaphylaxis, um, you know, food safety. So we are able to help any child in need. I know some children take um, allergy meds. They like to, uh, you know, they have to have their EpiPens. So I do log everything. I have the key, you know, to that. So everybody, you know, it's accessible in case, um, you know, it has to be taken out, but it is locked and secured. Um, and again, it's something that we take very seriously. So Okay, so we have another question. Do you offer half days or is it full-time only? Um, we do offer mini days and half days. The mini day is from nine to two and the half day is from nine to 12. Um, this year we're offering it to all ages, but normally it's only offered to the Tiny Top program. The only issue with um, the half days and full days is that if they go on a trip, they might not be back in time um, for that you know, half day or mini day to end. So they might miss things, but the option is there for you. Okay, and there's a question about ADHD children um, mm -hmm. yep. and control issues. She knows that you're trained, you know, you yep. used to teach Jake, but do other counselors have similar trainings? So like I, that's so fun. I just actually just asked that. Um, so like I said, um, especially my, so my, t my tiny tots, my KK, my one, two, um, my three, four, all those counts, all those group leaders are teachers. Um, and most of them work in special ed. So yes, um, I also do, you know, once I get the information, um, it is kept confidential, but I make sure that I have like a, a little special, you know, training session with them and just say, you know, go over a few things with them. Um, you know, if, you know, whether it's, you know, ADHD, autism, whatever it may be, I make sure that they are informed of how to handle it. Um, again, like I said, myself, Jonathan, um, all my group leaders, they we all carry walkie talkies on us at all times. Um, so it, we can be in communication within a second. So, you know, I do make sure that they are up to speed because I want everybody to have a great summer. That's all the questions right now, again, in the Q&A. Does anybody have any other questions? I mean, you can unmute yourself and speak, that's fine. Anything that we haven't touched on? If there are questions that do come up, um, please feel free to call the main office who can answer your questions, or you can email um, info at campsforus.org and they can answer any questions as well. Hello? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, hi, I have a quick question. In the past, um, it was, you guys had the ability to request to have a specific friend um, enrolled in the same class as, as a child. Is yep. that still a possibility? Yes. You can e email info at campsrs.org with that request. Just let them know what campus you're in and what grades and the names mm -hmm. of the children. And then, or you can, there's a place on your Camp and Touch account that when you're registering, you can add that as well. Okay, perfect. Anything else that we can help you guys with? No? No. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to call the office. We thank you guys for coming on to the, um, you know, the program here in the open house so that you can learn more about camp. We hope this helps you make your decision a little easier of where to send your child or children. Um, Heather, did you want to say anything? No, I just want to say that, you know what, I, I, I have to say, you know, 
We had an amazing summer last year. Um, I, I will tell you that, you know, my crew in particularly, which is my staff, um, you know, they all had their applications in by December 31st of last year um, because they wanted to make sure they got a spot to come back. So, you know, we are really excited to have another fabulous summer. Um, and I just hope that, you know, you guys, you know, like I said, if you have any questions or any hesitations, please do not um, hesitate to either call the number or send an email. And I want to thank you for taking the time this morning to come to our virtual open house. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You guys have a great Saturday. Thank you.